Year Zero Conference audience. My name is Martin Morondel. I'm the owner of the company Smart in Life, and together with my co-chair, Elmer Fürst from the Hilfsgemeinschaft, I'm really proud to welcome you to the session on accessible maps and tools for navigation on the mobility of people with disabilities. With Smart in Life, I try to improve the quality of life of people with disabilities and elder people by doing consulting services, doing research, and also doing training with single people on their job. Since many years, I follow what is going on in that domain of accessible maps and assistive technology to enhance the mobility of people with disabilities. So I'm really proud to welcome in this session the best innovators out there that we brought together for this Zero Conference Innovation Community. Therefore, I'm really proud to welcome Werner Bischoff from GuideMe, Markus Ruffer from Tech Innovation, Erzin Gouray from Paul Labs, Matthew McCain from Access Earth, Rene Espinosa from Lester Willow, Jack Saba from Accessible Qatar, a SASL initiative, and finally, we will conclude our session with Holger Dietrich from the Sozialhelden. Elmer, what do you think about our innovators? So, Martin, thank you, everybody. Welcome to our slot in the conference. Uh, it is a big pleasure for me to uh, have you all here and also to uh, be here and to say some words at the beginning. Um, just to give a, a short introduction, I would um, like to raise the point that I think uh, the digitalization and everything which is connected with it, uh, like uh, the new tools and the new uh, technologies, you know, have uh, made uh, substantial progress during the last years. And so we can learn from our colleagues uh, in this session uh, that we have now uh, improved tools and improved ways in order to make, uh, to make cities or rural areas more accessible. And I think that is a, a very important thing as we have um, so many people with disabilities in our countries uh, who would like to take part in, in social and everyday life. And uh, by having those tools, uh, it's getting uh, more and more easier uh, to, to uh, have them um, yeah, take part, to involve them in activities, to um, let them be a part of society and uh, to avoid social or even technical exclusion. And so I'm very proud to, to be part of this community. After this uh, conference, we will try to keep up the community, to keep in contact, maybe also to establish some kinds of collaborations, uh, corporations, maybe joint projects. Let's see what will happen. But it is a very good starting point uh, now to, to uh, be here and to have all of you together. So we are doing this in the form of a recording. A recorded session, but we afterwards will have uh, the the opportunity to get in touch per, in in person. Um, so not really in person, of course, virtually, but uh, directly and to exchange our points of views and perspectives. So thank you very much for being here and uh, have a big fun and uh, also a good input now from our presenters. Thank you. Yeah, I would say let's give them a floor and start with the, uh, the presentation of Werner Bischoff and Guide Me. Hi everyone, my name is Werner Bischoff. I am the founder and CEO of Guide Me. I'm very happy to introduce you to Guide Me. So here are my contact data. Uh, please feel free to contact me. So GuideMe is a new video assistance system for all travelers as well as for people with disabilities and those needing emergency services. 
on our homepage our short videos in German and in English to see how GuideMe works. Using GuideMe, passengers can request help from a control center, a volunteer or a family member at the touch of a button on their smartphone. For example, so the operator has a professional PC workplace with all necessary information on it. So in addition of the live camera image, the helper has also audio and data connection. By means of the data connection, the current location can be transmitted via GPS on the request, important information about the person seeking help, for example, home address, medicine, phone number, and impairment, etc., is also made available. So, with this assistance tool for smartphone and PC, support can be offered exactly in real time across the board without the need to retrofit any special infrastructure. So you need no Bluetooth picking, you need no Wi-Fi, you need only a smartphone and a data flat rate on it. So, and moreover, it's a perfect inclusion workplace. So, what's different? What's our USB? For example, one, you need no special infrastructure, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. It works worldwide in real time, also as an indoor navigation tool. Sign language is also possible. GuideMe can be accessed from any app via a link. So easy to in implement in your application. Uh, what's our goal for 21? GuideMe is already in use in Berlin at the catchment area of 6 million people. In the coming year, we would like to make GuideMe available in 10 more major cities. So that's our major goal for this year. Uh, how can the Zero community help us, me? We are looking for partners who run GuideMe on their area, on their country and your city with their own employees. We provide the technical system and the app via license model and you support your customers in their own national language. So please feel free, write me an email, ask me questions, look on our homepage. Uh, if there are any questions, please contact me. Uh, feel free to ask me, okay? And so here you can use guide me with a lane strap. So very easy to have your hands free for luggage, for a cane, you go, you walk. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you, Werner, for this great introduction of GuideMe. Isn't that a cool project? No, it's not a project. It's a, uh, it's a product out there that is available. So what else do you want more than providing assistance and creating inclusive workplaces? Werner, so you have to uh, uh, build this great system now. Where do you see, uh, which city do you dream of having on board is one of those 10 cities? Oh, hi. Every city is what's great. Uh, it's easier for me in German, for example, but, but we have implement guide me in German and in English, so it works everywhere. And if, if it works, for example, in, in, uh, in Qatar, for example, so they can use our system and they can operate themselves with our system. That's, I think, the great solution. Uh, so they have uh, own members. We can learn the operators. We have an online tool uh, to to make good operators, to can certify these operators. And so uh, it's easy for them to make a good operation, to make a good guidance for everyone, if it is blind or not. And with our system, we can switch is the, the end user needs a sign language interpreter and we have one in the system, we can switch directly to the sign language operator because we have a video call and so we can do sign language too. And so it's, I think it's, it's easy for every, for every app to, to have as a back, back up system for, okay. it works anyone not, we can do it and help in five minutes, for example. Okay. That is really great. Thanks a lot. So everybody who wants to catch up with GuideMe, 
just feel free to uh, chat afterwards uh, on this uh, pre-recorded session already right now your uh, questions in the chat so we can establish direct contact. Thanks, Werner. So Thank let's you. stay in Austria and continue with a really cool innovation concerning independent uh, mobility for visually impaired and blind people. Markus Raffer from Tech Innovation has created a really cool innovative solution for uh, uh, that field. Markus, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Martin. So hello to everyone out there. My name is Markus from Tech Innovation and we developed the world's first smart shoe for detecting obstacles for visually impaired and blind people. You may see it here. This shoe with the small attach attachment in the front is called Innomake. Innomake means innovation only can happen if someone is out there who makes it. And this is our motto. Um, I grew up uh, as a visually impaired uh, and blind guy. I have only a residual vision of less than 4%. And I always have been very unhappy about the technical tools uh, for the mobility of visually impaired people. So I was very happy and very uh, interested when I came to my now uh, colleague in the company, Kevin, uh, who had the idea to put a technology for detecting obstacles inside a shoe. You may think why a shoe. Uh, a shoe is the deepest integration into the daily life of people and also the deepest connection to mobility of people. If you go out there at home, you have your shoes with you, which are showing always into the right area in the front to detect obstacles. You have also both hands free and can concentrate and the things to the things that really matters in your daily life. So at every step, the Innomake guides you and detects obstacles for you. So how do you get the information about these obstacles? On the one hand, you get a vibration inside the shoe. So you have to notice this, that this technology in the front is on both shoes and the vibration informs you how far you are away from an obstacle and you can set the range of distance measurement um, at your comfort. So that means uh, you can switch, for example, from one meter. This is uh, useful if you are indoor, uh, but also up to four meters in the front. Uh, if you are going out there where there is a, a bigger space for walking fastly. So you see it here, this Innomake attachment in the front is switchable. So I easily can take it here. And as you can see in the shoe, there is only a metal rail integrated. This metal rail uh, makes the shoe only two centimeters longer and ensures that the electronic is adjusted in the best position for detecting obstacles. So we can adapt nearly every shoe uh, to integrate this metal. So you can choose your favorite shoe and we easily modify it uh, to make it ready for the Innomake. So where are we now at the moment? Since last year, we are a certified medical device class one for whole Europe. That means we are on the market and uh, are boosting our sale at the moment because our goal is to bring it uh, all over out there to offer this innovative solution to everyone who benefits from it. So on the one hand, we are cooperating with specialized uh, dealers uh, for tools for visually impaired and blind people. 
but at the other at the, at the other hand, we also cooperate with companies who want to give their visually impaired and blind employees a tool to make their working life, their daily working life better. And the best thing about it, without adapting any company building or company area, so they can give their uh, self-sufficient tool on the foot of their employees and make them safer at their daily lives and make them more comfortable at their ways. So we are very happy about any cooperation partners out there who want to bring this Innomec shoe for detecting obstacles out there and are very happy if you contact me. Thank you very much and really looking forward to any questions. Thanks, Markus. That's really cool. So we are really looking forward to a good discussion afterwards. And yeah, I can only say coming from the Alps of Austria, there are many people really waiting to do better hiking with, uh, without stumbling over routes, etc. And that is what we definitely need. Thanks a lot, Markus. You're welcome. Thank you. OK, the next on our list, it's going to be Elsin from Polylabs. So we are really keen to see what Ersin has to offer. Hello everyone, I am Ersin. I will just uh, present this small presentation. So I hope you can see the presentation now. So Poilabs, uh, we are for benefit startup and our vision is to make the mobility of visual disabled community easier. So we developed an indoor positioning technology and provide indoor navigation uh, and it enables them to move independently and achieve more. So our solution is available in uh, many venues like offices, malls, libraries, museums and all indoor spaces from small to large. So we have uh, developed the beacons, the Bluetooth sensors, we installed them inside the venues and we provide the service through mobile applications. So the users do not need additional uh, device. Our solution is works with iOS and uh, Android. So there are three main features, in fact. The first one is orientation. So when a visual disabled walks inside the indoor space, they can learn more about the nearby stores. So what are they selling and which direction is this place? And the secondly, it's a turn by turn navigation. So they can just get a navigation and uh, get the information by turn by turn so they can learn how many meters, when to turn and where is the nearest restroom or the elevator or whatever they need. And thirdly, it's especially for museums and that kind of places. So we have also uh, provide location based information. So when they pass nearby a painting or a sculpture, they can learn the, st the history of these art pieces and also they can get the description of these pieces. So our aim is to make them uh, enjoy the museums or everything equally as others. So uh, we also provide similar technology to make it sustainable because our goal is to uh, expand it uh, in Turkey. We started in Turkey and want to expand globally. So we try to make it cheap as possible that everyone can use this solution in their venues. So by doing so, we also provide additional services using the same technology and by doing so, we reached uh, in 12 cities in Turkey and we are providing uh, more than 100 uh, venues. Some of them are very large and some of them are very small and currently we are covering almost 2 million uh, square meters indoor space and they are totally accessible. We, are, we have our own application, mobile application, it's called Blind Doors. And also we are an uh, SDK, so everybody can integrate this SDK to their mobile application. That then they can offer the solution in their venue. We have a subscription-based model, so the venue uh, just pay on a monthly basis. We provide the beacons for free, and they only pay uh, the monthly subscription. And it is starting from as low as ten dollars per month. So uh, this is my contact information. So. To, currently, we only available in Turkey, but our aim is to expand it globally. 
Last year was not a good year for indoor spaces because of the pandemic, but we hope that everything will change in 2021. So uh, we are looking for partners and venue owners that can help us uh, to grow our technology and make it much better with their feedbacks. And thank you for your uh, things. And you can ask me anything and we can also discuss more deeply in the discussion sessions. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Arsene. That really looks amazing and amazing which quantity of space you have already cover, uh, covered. So there are definitely lots of experience already ex uh, existing. So scaling up is the next step. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. OK, thanks a lot. Next in our group, it's going to be Matthew uh, uh, McCann from Access Earth. And I'm sure he has lots of great accessibility information for you. Thanks very much, Martin. And um, I really appreciate being given the time to talk at this conference. Um, so with Access Earth, um, we help, our ambition is to be the world's largest database of accessibility information. And for that, we have sort of three kind of main solutions that we help to provide to people and uh, who would need this information. So one thing we, we help to get, we're a data gatherer in that we provide a mobile app for people to crowdsource this accessibility information, um, whether it be for mobility or now more recently, um, COVID social distancing criteria, uh, where users can just answer a series of simple yes or no questions about a particular venue, and that data is then available for anyone else who's looking to visit that area. But we also aggregate uh, information that exists around the web so that, for example, some of the smart cities that we work with, they have existing data sets from uh, particular audits that they have done over the years. So we help to integrate that and simplify the information so that the end user can have more information available for when they uh, can go out to the urban environment. And then we have to provide that data out to not just our end users, but also uh, customers such as in the smart city space or in the sports and stadium and large venue operating space too. Um, and really, our goal for uh, 2021 is to really expand on what would be our, our key differentiator, which is our AI uh, data aggregator. So we work, for example, with the European Space Agency to look at things like accessible parking and through satellite imagery to help um, cities and users just get information more quickly and easily. But we also want to expand on uh, the different uh, data sets that we're collecting. So right now we're focused on mobility and COVID-19 social distancing, but we want to be uh, providing information for everyone, such that for sensory, cognitive, um, and things like that. So really our goal and our ask from this conference is to get certain uh, partners within the space, uh, no matter the country, because um, we're named Access Earth for a reason, and we're focused mostly in uh, Ireland, the UK and parts of the US, but we want to this year to really help expand our partnership network uh, within Europe and to provide more languages um, with for the data. So, um, yep, uh, thank you very much for your time and we're looking forward to any questions later on. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Matthew. So that really sounds uh, amazing, especially with the AI approach. I think there's really lots of potential in. So uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about the uh, uh, about the AI uh, and all the other information provided by Exeters, feel free to get in contact afterwards on the chat. Next one on our group, let's go to Mexico City to Rene Espinosa and Rene, what is Lazarilla doing? Sure, yeah, give me a second. I will present a small presentation. Um, perfect. Give me a second. Okay, uh, so hello everybody. I'm Rene Espinosa. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Lazarillo. Um, Lazarillo, we, we started Lazarillo because we wanted to help citizens with disabilities navigate cities easily and also actively participate in society. So, but we started with a focus in first in people with visual disabilities. 
and we develop a free mobile app that helps them navigate through the city streets through an audible guide and allows them to be more independent. It has a lot of integration, but also it's a way to for businesses to connect with this community and start creating a relationship. Um, the app uh, is available both in Android and iOS. It works all over the world. Uh, as I said, it's free. It's free for the end user. And it's also available in 25 languages. Uh, most of these languages has been translated by our community, so we're really happy for that. And it provides a better user experience. We have around 185,000 users around the globe. Um, and in the United States, we have around 18,000 users. Um, and they can also have like a base functionality in which the app can work in their local city. And then we have a platform that we can enhance functionalities on each city. So these functionalities are from wayfinding, um, news, uh, integration and then also uh, video assistant integrations. So for wayfinding in a way is um, allowing the user to easily find um, the, the buildings or each location, but also it, it has multiple layers where uh, institutions can also add in the wayfinding for their locations and so get a guide uh, inside. The app is, um, is smart enough that it detects your assistive technology you're using and so if you're able to see, it can provide you maps, as well as you're not able to see, it will only show you the information in an audible format, uh, providing you all the information you need to search for a location, do a route, and also interact with the location. So we actually, this is a hospital that we, um, we have worked with, but we also have worked with university campuses, in which that a university campus can make their outdoor campus accessible, and then some buildings, um, added to the platform, and this is also a tool for not only uh, the visually impaired students, but also students with a, using a wheelchair or anyone that will find would in a way be lost in a huge campus like this. Um, so every location can be customized, and in the case of a university, it's possible to add a different classrooms, um, different food, food location, restrooms, and stuff. And then for every location, the user can do a route, but also get an audible experience inside the campus if they have what we call the exploration. Um, on the side of um, newsfeed and also video integration, we have done different implementations, especially now due to COVID. So how we were focusing now on how we can connect companies and institutions when users are home. And so uh, we did a pilot with a company called Home Center. So it's like, um, a company that provides you different objects for your home and so they can connect with agents and they just can help them buy the different um, products for their home and also get like a sort of video assistance. Um, but really I wanted to show this because this is a certificate we just got from Mad Accessibility in Qatar and it's a certificate of endorsement that is for two years. So is anyone looking to do projects there in Qatar? Like, yeah, our solution is indoors, and with that you get more points on different projects. Um, so yeah, um, due to time I wanted to uh, show a video, but I, I will then send it on. And we're now looking uh, for people that are working on accessibility. Um, we're looking for partners and potential integrations. We have done that before. We integrate with other solutions, both hardware and software solutions. And the integrations we do is to reach bigger communities and pro create win-win situations. So please, is anyone looking to work um, on like, and they see a potential integration with us? Like we would love to talk more about it. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. That's really amazing. And also already we see how our network maybe comes closer together as yeah. Uh, particularly, our next speaker is uh, from Qatar. So, Jack Saber, he's working for uh, Accessible Qatar, a uh, SASL initiative, and he is already also in the field of accessibility, accessible maps, how to get information from venues since several years, especially as I think as Qatar is uh, facing uh, the European soccer, uh, the Worldwide uh, Soccer Championship. So, Jack, what do you think about when you see all these great innovations? 
well these are really really great like what comes to my mind for example when i when i see uh, uh, what marcus did i i directly think would could this shoe be integrated with lazarello or with uh, boy labs with rene and Erzen, for example because because you know one one of the issues that uh, you might be facing and and the accessible indoor navigation is that when when inside a mall or a venue then somebody will put a flower in the middle of the corridor or somebody will put a, a, a kiosk for example how would you you need to again design the map or or do the mapping which will require time and and uh, cost and so so for example i think like this this uh, shoe would solve uh, many problems that that you might be facing for example in the indoor navigation so so when you think of every solution uh, they, they all complete each other if, if someone with with a disability or with a visual impairment w w would use all these solutions in front of us then that's it they they, they will live a normal life with fully accessible uh, and full support everywhere this is amazing I completely agree with you and really that's why why we also decided to bring those areas of accessible maps, navigation and mobility together because I also believe in this idea and when thinking about cloud computing, let's think about 5G and uh, uh, possibilities with uh, uh, very low, uh, uh, with very high broadband connectivity, but also very little latency. There's really where I think those aspects can work together. So what do you think also when you think about a mega event like uh, the soccer championship? Right. So so like uh, before going to the event or to the to the stadium or a, a person with a certain disability would want to know if this place is accessible for him, uh, even if the place have an, an accessible map or an indoor navigation solution. But still, what if it's not accessible for me? So, for example, this is why we thought of developing the solution uh, which we called Accessible Qatar a few years back because we knew this would be really needed and may be forced by the FIFA uh, to, to have the most accessible World Cup because this is their aim. Uh, so we developed the mobile app and, and uh, website and we uh, included uh, the public locations, public venues, hotels, uh, uh, parks, museums, uh, touristic areas, uh, uh, stadiums so so we, we've done uh, we did not we did not depend on the audience uh, comments only because uh, these are an add-on so we had to provide a credible information so we had to do an actual audit for every venue which takes time uh, so this is what we did uh, an actual uh, accessibility auditor uh, consultant visits the venues checks the locations uh, issues the report put a summary information on the accessible cutter app uh, and we meet and provide the report to the venue management so that they can do some some changes to become more accessible and we've done it in a way uh, that to include uh, all disabilities so so um, a person can choose if they are a wheelchair user mobility impairment visual impairment hearing impairment or intellectual uh, uh, problems uh, so 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 we we try to cater for all uh, uh, disabilities. So um, if I'm seeing all these solutions in front of us, so it can be, it could be uh, categorized as steps, like step one, I need the information, which is not available on the website. Uh, it's it's a, a big issue globally, not only in Qatar. So then um, uh, solutions like accessible Qatar uh, would be uh, maybe as a step one, then as a step two, uh, having an accessible indoor uh, navigation app uh, like uh, Poilabs or Lazarello, and then using the 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 the, the shoe, and then having an issue calling. Uh, calling um, uh, Werner and, and having the solution. So so it's an, uh, it's really uh, imagine having a, a, a giant solution that includes every, everything. Thanks a lot, Jack. So I would say that was really interesting what we saw from all the, these partners. But of course, the session is not over. There is a little bit of time left uh, for uh, for discussions and in particular, there will also, uh, also be another short spot, an uh, interview with Holger Dietrich from the Sozialhelden. They make a uh, uh, wheel map and many other initiatives.
and he's going to tell us a little bit what he thinks the future in the field of accessible maps and tools for navigation and mobility of people with disabilities is going to look like. Like that, I want to give the last word to my dear colleague, Elma first, and like this, I want to close the session. Elma, what do you think? Yeah, I think we had a bunch of, of wonderful presentations now, and uh, uh, what I promised before the, before the session uh, uh, has been realized, because uh, I think we, we can be very proud to, to have uh, those uh, people in our community, and I think we uh, are all looking forward now to the discussion afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. And if you out there think that's a community I want to join, feel free to get in contact with, uh, with us. Of course, we're interested to meet other fellows and other experts out there who really are uh, those people working in the field of, uh, of those technologies. When we needed our first office place and all these kind of things. So that was the second step. And I think the third one, the third transition was when we, I think that was like five years into, into the whole thing, when we said like, okay, now we know crowdsourcing is working, but what we need is um, collaboration with all the other organizations who do this and, and standardize what we are doing. And we did this with, with a grant from google.org and it's called accessibility.cloud, which is a back end. So we have now not only this 1 million places by all the users of Wheelmap, but also 1.2 million places by partners. So it's 2.3 million places in total, which is like double from only this, but it made it, it, it is only possible because like more than 100 organizations are joining into our efforts on what we're doing. And this is what we think disability mainstreaming should be all about. Wow, that's really cool. And that's also, I think, reflects very well why we come here together at the Zero Project Conference, really to get new partners, to see how things are working, etc. So I can imagine not only among those hundreds of partners, but you many, might get many requests or uh, contacts to new ideas, new innovations, etc. So where do you currently see this field transitioning? Well, I think there are some things which are getting more normal. So mainstream maps applications are thinking more and more about accessibility, which is a good thing. And also maps themselves slowly become more accessible, for example, for people who cannot see and use screen readers. Uh, it's still untackled, but it's getting a little bit better. Um, but there are also fields which are still unsolved. For example, um, pedestrian routing, so or wheelchair routing, is even pretty bad for pedestrians who are walking, but for people who are using wheelchairs, it's still very bad because of lack of, of information. You need a lot of detailed information, but on the horizon, you see that you know with satellites and with LiDAR cars and all this, there, there's potentially maybe data, for 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 making this possible but you need a lot a lot of data when you when people expect like every single cobblestone on the sidewalk to be mapped and to be rated for how well people can walk or ride or or, or drive on these and they're also behind behind uh, parking cars often so that's an untackled problem i would say so that's one thing and the other thing is i think uh, which which we are working on now when we are standardizing all these different accessibility aspects is to include all kinds of different accessibility needs of different people. So we, my co-founder is using an electric wheelchair, so we were all about wheelchairs, even the name, but we have 160 different criteria now in our list with our 100 partners. So we are interested in, you know, assistance dogs and all different things. Are, are there, are there, you know, induction loops, it's all these kinds of details which can be uh, you know of an, an accessibility feature of a physical place and this is still scattered around everybody does a little bit, a little bit differently and we are now starting together with the w3c so with a standards organization to make this one open standard so everybody can use this so when somebody says like okay i have data about hotels how do I uh, report the accessibility of a bathroom in a hotel? We have a whole data set, then the hotel booking engine can just use or the maps engine can just use, and they don't have to be the experts on accessibility. They should just use what's already established. Yeah. And so we are helping now creating this open standard and inviting everybody to join into this discussion. 
there's this sentence, who has the standard is the one who has the market. So I think standardization is really a big issue. So uh, and also for I think for innovators for trying out something new. This mean doesn't make some uh, don't try to put the model together on your own, but uh, base it on an existing standard. So what are the three key elements you would uh, the three uh, takeaways if you meet some innovators? in the field of accessible maps and navigation and mobility uh, for people with disabilities, what would you give them on their, on, their, on their way home? So for the easy things, I would say two things that don't scale. So our first version definitely didn't scale, but it wasn't necessary. So fix it later. So we, we usually start with building things and then we're happy if somebody takes it up. So the risk is more like the, the stuff I'm building uh, nobody's interested in this. This is what I'm much more worried about. What I'm not so much worried about is, oh, this is working, but it's not scaling because this is what you can fix. What you first need to worry about is, does anybody care? So, for example, we see a lot of people who try to build marketplaces. So there's an offering and there's a demand side, and it's immensely difficult to build something like this because you need both at the same time to make matchmaking. And, and so we would say, can you do things which don't need this counterpart, for example, with Wheelmap, we, without knowing, luckily, we said like, if you only had three coffee shops in every city or in, in some cities, it would already be useful. You know, when I travel from Berlin to Munich and I want to have a coffee, I only need three coffee shops to have at least something to start with. I don't need all of them. And think about this, like how quickly is what you're doing useful? And the third thing is, um, you know, don't don't reinvent the wheel. Don't do it again. We saw so many things who have done another wheel map, and we we're, we're actually rescuing data from failed government funded or whatever funded projects to say like, hey, the data is useful, but you ran out of money, out of funding, of whatever. Let's at least keep the data. So what we do also is that we provide a white label version of wheel map, so where we help other nonprofit organizations to do the campaign work in their country, in their region, and to do everything what we did just without any line of code because we can provide all of this. The mapping event parties, the software, the internationalization, the data, uh, the data connections, and that's the thing what we what, what we do now. And also the openness of the whole thing. So what we do is open, it's open data, and which which helps people to drive away the idea of that it's about collaboration and not so much about competition on this. Yeah, thanks a lot. These are really good, good uh, and valuable, great insights. So I'm sure our innovation community uh, will grab them and uh, follow some of them. And yeah, I hope that we're going to have a good discussion now in our question and answer meeting. Thanks, Holger, for your interview and really looking forward to see this community of accessible maps and tools for navigation uh, for mobility of people with disabilities growing. And thanks for all your efforts and work you have done over the last many, many years. Yeah, I'm happy to be part of the community. Additionally, we have a special invitation from Holger for you. Yeah. So I, I discussed that we have a new program uh, for anybody who wants to get involved in wheelmap.org worldwide. So if you want to become an ambassador and map places, organize mapping events, so far COVID allows it. And we have a program for, for uh, where we would train you to hold your own mapping events to be a wheelmap ambassador in your region, in your country. So if you're interested, um, you go to wheelmap.org and you will find the information. You can apply until the end of February um, and it will be free and the effort will be about uh, two hours per week and it will be held in German or English and both. So English is welcome uh, and we are happy to, to do accommodation for people with disabilities, of course. So I look forward to your application. Thanks a lot. I want to say goodbye. See you in the discussion and get in contact with all the cool innovators. Goodbye. <laughs>